Happy Wednesday, y'all. We're on day three. What did I call it? Oh, I know. Tomato Marathon Week. <laughs> I hope y'all are doing well. This video, I had to change up some stuff for this week, especially today. So, <clears throat> it's 1.30 in the afternoon. And let me tell you why we're late on this video. Because we have AC. Did you hear me? We have air condition. I mean, we had those little windy, you know, not in, in windows. No, I'm talking about like the whole house is fixed as of an hour ago. Praise the Lord. Libby got full blown AC. Now I ain't been sweating too bad. But man, I can just feel a cool breeze just kind of evenly flowing through the house. And let me tell you what, I'm going to sleep some good tonight. <laughs> so that's why I got a late start. So I changed up some recipes I wanted to do. I switched up Thursday. They had tomorrow for today or Friday. I don't know. I, I had wrote it all down. So this one's going to go extremely fast. Are y'all ready? You sure you ready? We making spaghetti sauce. You're thinking, oh yeah. Uh-uh. Lippy done had it 27 ways to Sunday. And I ain't never liked none of it. Uh, but I love Mrs. Wages spaghetti sauce. <laughs> It's good, y'all. I kid you not. Now, before we dive in, I, I, I did tweak it a little. Okay, just a little. But, now that it's gone up in price. These are, I had to check the expiration. And they're still good till next year. These three, because I'm tripling the recipe. The others are good till 25 and 26. So, I need to get these done. But this right here, when I purchased them, it was around three bucks a pack, okay? And you're gonna get 11 cups of sauce. And I'll explain where that 11 comes from. I have price, because the spaghetti sauce that we buy is five something a jar now. When I went to the store last week, I believe I saw this and it was at Walmart or Brookshire's. This is now like 424. Okay? So now keep that in mind, 424, and you supply your tomatoes. Guys, not only is it good, but it don't break the bank. Because a jar of sauce, spaghetti sauce, our preferred brand is about 559 to 6 bucks. I checked at Walmart a week ago. And they're, I think it's called traditional spaghetti sauce, just, I guess, just plain. It is three-something. I checked ragu, and what is that other one? Prego? No. Maybe Prego? I don't know. That's hitting that 4 to $5 mark. So we got to keep that in mind. So let's say if we went with the cheapest of the cheapest, and I think that was the Walmart brand I saw, um, let's just say three fifty. Okay, it's one jar. Now, this here, you can use fresh tomatoes, which I did, or you can use canned tomatoes. Yes. Not the ones that has the onions and all of that. I'm talking about just plain canned tomatoes. I believe I showed y'all that last year with the salsa, Miss Wages salsa. Well, it's a it makes 10 cups, actually 10.34 cup. So I've always rounded mine up to 11 cups of puree tomatoes or 11 cups of your cans. I think the cans are 14.5 ounces. The big ones are 28 ounces, so you can do the math. But in this recipe, you need 11 cups of pureed 
tomatoes per bag. That's a lot of pasta sauce, especially if you're using your homegrown tomatoes. It's still affordable if you're gonna have to buy your canned, uh, petite diced, in my opinion, is gonna work better. So when you chop it, it's gonna give you that consistency. Um, your crushed would be great too. You could actually just leave them crushed. I don't remember the price, but I think they're like 70 cents for a 14.5 ounce can. Don't quote me on that. So if you're still with me and you're cheering me on, we're semi-homemaking semi spaghetti sauce. And guys, this is out of this world. Now, we're not big spaghetti eaters as far as the pasta sauce, but what we eat a lot of is lasagna through the fall and winter. It's just what we like. We're not the... Uh, now, my daughter and grandkids, I think they do spaghetti like once a week, every other week. We just don't. I have to really watch the, the acid with my stomach, and so does Buddy. And plus, we're just not the biggest fans of it, you know? So, nothing has ever really appealed to us until I took a chance and I said, well, what's one, one bag, one, you know, one yield? What is it gonna hurt? And guys, I love it. Now, I will be adding uh, red pepper flakes. You can omit that. I just like a little bit of heat, not much, but I do like a little bit of heat. So the only thing you need for this is sugar, a bag of this, and tomatoes. That is it. And of course, the directions are on the back of the bag. 11 cups is the sweet spot per bag. No matter how you achieve the consistency from garden to store bought. But I'm fixing to show you how I actually crushed my tomatoes up. And guys, this is so easy. I wasn't sure it was going to make it because this is like 15, 20 years old. But let me show you my, my gadget. <laughs> and there she sits. My old faithful KitchenAid food processor. That's how I achieved the consistency that I wanted. I don't think y'all been on this side of the stove, have you? I'm not sure. Anyway, um... All I did was put my tomatoes in here, but remember, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I am tripling this. So in other words, I'm using all three of these, okay? Each package calls for one fourth cup sugar. So you would add three fourths cup times it by three. I add one full cup, not a heaping cup, one full cup. There again, I tend to want to lean more towards a marinara than just, I don't know, real highly Italian seasoned spaghetti sauce. And I think that's what throws us off. This I can control. It is, it's, it's phenomenal. So I'm going to drop the camera and as I'm stirring and blending this in, I will tell you actually what I do to the sauce when I'm ready to use it. So. I'm going to get you dropped down here. Remember, we're times it by three. I will put, even though you don't need the directions, it's on here. I will put a re the recipe in the description because, like I said, 11 cups is your sweet spot because you have to allow for evaporation, the water content that's in these tomatoes. Not necessarily your store-bought canned tomatoes, but your fresh tomatoes. And remember, I'm mixing mine. I've got slicers. I've got Roma's, you know, San Marzano. So mine's a mixture. So I gotta allow for evaporation of the water. That's why I say 11 cups of pureed, you know, or crushed tomatoes per bag is spot on. Okay, I'm gonna put my heat probably about a number eight. I'm on the back burner because I have my water bath canner sitting over here getting extremely warm with my jars in it. I left the sugar sitting here. Remember, each bag says one-fourth cup. That means I would have needed three-fourths cup. I'm doing one full cup. Now, in goes 
the packets. Last bag. And I'm going to measure out a good tablespoon. You know what? <laughs> How about two tablespoons? Okay, I know y'all have done went and got your ice water. You're already fanning me. Y'all know. And I'm just going to, and it's a hot mess right now, guys, but it's not going to look like this. Oh, by the way, can y'all see my tomatoes? <laughs> I forgot to show y'all. So I'm going to get this well and incorporated once it starts coming to a boil. Okay, that's once it starts coming to a boil, because you want to keep stirring this till you reach that temperature. Um, once it reaches a boil, we're going to turn it to a simmer with just a steady light bowl, making sure you're stir stirring often. And we're gonna allow it to simmer for 25 minutes. You really want them flavors to incorporate. Now, like I said, we're gonna be water bathing these and I will be water bathing in quart jars. Um, I've tried it with the pints and it's just not quite enough for us because usually when I make a pasta our lasagna that's a leftover so a quart jar does us perfect all right i'm just going to get this well and incorporated and once it starts that bowl i'll bring you back i don't want to miss this little bit of flavor right here well don't we have a ball in the kitchen with lippy <laughs> while we're waiting for that to come up to a bowl sorry Kind of itch. Um, there was a comment made on yesterday's video, and it warranted me to revisit yesterday just for a second. The comment, and I'm going to paraphrase, was, oh no, I made blah, blah, blah. It was a canning tomatoes from the ball book. And I water bath. And I used pepperoncinis and I believe it was jalapenos, the young lady said. But the ball book said for her to do that. I need to clarify something. When I said in the ball book and the recipe I was going by, I was pressure canning. If the ball book says it is a water bath safe recipe, then you water bath it. And as I explained to the young lady, it was because of the recipe, going by just the recipe, the pepperoncinis and the jalapenos didn't warn for that low acid to have to then be pressure canned. And I believe onions is, because there was no onions involved, I believe they're 5.8. So she was definitely in the safe zone. But I needed to clarify that because some of you may have thought the same thing. Well, my ball book told me this recipe of a tomato, you know, recipe needed to be water bath canned. Oh, no, Lippy, did I do wrong? No, you didn't do wrong. If you're going by a ball recipe and it says water bath, then you water bath. Because, see, at the end of the day, it's all about the vegetables, and mixing and blending and the amount of vegetables. So as you see, I had three fourths cup of vegetables in yesterday's stewed tomatoes. Too many vegetables for a water bath canner, basically. And then of course the capsicum that she used, which is in the jalapenos, somewhat in the pepperoncinis, because that usually yields into your hotter peppers, has a lower acidic than say your onions or your bells. More the sweet peppers, they're lower acid than say your hot peppers because the, the capacin, capacin, however you want to pronounce it, it tends to bring it down some. But there again, that's when you're learning all about pH. But I did want to revisit yesterday to let you know, if you open a ball book and it is a tomato type recipe, and you're adding what the recipe says, and it says water bath, you water bath. It's just when you get into higher volumes of vegetables that you have to then move towards pressure canning 
if the recipe calls for it in a ball book. So I hope I clarified that because, and honey, if you're watching, you're perfectly fine. You are perfectly fine because you went right by the recipe. Not all tomato recipes require pressure canning and not all of them require water bath canning, as long as you're following the recipe. So I feel better because it had almost slipped my mind and I'm sitting here stirring going, because I really wanted to touch on that because it could have been confusing yesterday when I said, well, blah, 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 and blah, 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 and it's got to go in a pressure canner. So I apologize. I should have clarified it. You know, not all have to, but the one I was doing yesterday had to be. And I got to keep stirring because I don't want it sticking. I'm going to get me a thicker stainless steel pot next, one day. I just never do because this thing will stick on you, this pot. I think I want to try to get one like my water bath canner. Uh, that's not necessarily a water bath canner, but this particular brand that my daughter got me, I really like it. Also, another thing, when you're dealing with, like, Miss Wages pasta sauce, no need for lemon juice, no need for citric acid. It's already in the packet, mixed in with all the seasonings. Sure is. So that even cuts out another step. And guys, it smells so stinking good. It hadn't come up to a boil yet. But that clicked in my head and thought I'd share that too. <laughs> Boy, what a video we gonna have today. Okay, I'm sitting at a number eight and I wanted to show you something. It had just come to a boil and I turned it, I'd actually cranked it up. I brought it up to a boil. Let me see. You see it's starting to want to move and bubble. That's where you want. But this is what I wanted to show you. Can y'all see that line inside? That's how much it has reduced down. And that's why I like to use 11 cups of your pureed, crushed um, tomatoes. Whether that be fresh, whether that be canned. As long as you use canned, that's just the tomatoes, the salt, and I believe it's citric acid in there. Just your plain Jane canned tomatoes. So that's why I like that 11 cups. I've learned over the years by giving myself that, because it only comes to a fourth of a cup, really, because if you really go by the measurements, it's like 10 and three-fourths cup, okay, of product. So I just wanted to show y'all that. Rounding it up to 11 cups per package, if you decide to, to try this, and it's really good, um, it's going to allow for your evaporation and your sauce stays consistent. Okay, I just got my jars out of the water bath canner. That's where I had them sitting, and since I'm using quart jars, like I said, I'm going to add a teaspoon of canning salt to each jar, and we're going to get these ladled up. And we will be debubbling this. Seven quarts in a water bath canner. Once it comes to a rapid boil, I'm going to set the timer for 45 minutes. I got everything cleaned up, so while we're waiting on the water bath canner, I took the liberty to actually get a price on how much well, how much you would have if you used canned tomatoes, not tomatoes out of the garden. So, I went on the Walmart site. Boy, I got something on my glass of water from washing. Hang on. So, I went on the Walmart site, and I was a little high on the pasta sauce. It's actually $3.22 a package. So, I used three packages, $9.66. I also looked at their... Uh, 28 ounce cans, you would need three of those if you're using a batch of three like I did, okay? So $1.36 a can. I would need six of them. This is canned tomatoes, $4.08. So if you had to buy your tomatoes and buy your Mrs. Wages, you would only be out $13.74 divided by eight quarts. Now that's quarts, and y'all know 
the size pasta jars. Divided by eight quarts is a dollar and 71 cents. So if y'all wanna try this, especially you new beginners that wanna can and, and learn, you know, this is to me one of the best ways to do it. Now, if you have your own tomatoes, then you're only out the Mrs. Wages, and that's $3.22 a package, which is what I was out of. So it really cost me $9.66 to use three of the packages. I didn't have to supply my onions, my bell peppers. Of course, y'all know I, I lost all of that in that freeze dryer, but I didn't have to supply any of that. So the only out-of-pocket expense was my Mrs. Wages, $9.66, plus my rings, flats, and jars, which I guess the only thing I can consider is the flats, and I've had those quite a few years because I was buying them in bulk. So I've not had to buy any flats. So guys, this is pretty cheap. And like I said, this is quality ingredients. It's a great pasta sauce because when you open the jar, if you want to bulk it up and add onions, add more garlic, add, you know, bell peppers, whatever it is, more sugar, you know, however you make yours, for $1.71 a quart, you can't beat that. So that's like, let's see, you don't get a quart in a store. I don't remember, I, I called myself looking. It's less than a quart. And the cheapest I found was $3. That's the cheapest I found her jar that has all kinds of junk in it. So I thought I'd share that with y'all. You can't go wrong. You just really can't. And new beginners or someone that has to got, you know, you gotta go buy tomatoes and say so you can't find them, get you some canned tomatoes. And that way you control your pasta sauce and the ingredients going in it. The only thing in Miss Wages is citric acid. We talked about that yesterday. Oh, I lied. I've got Grandpa. It's very loose, guys. I got Grandpa a little pint set out to cool <coughs> so he could have him some pasta sauce. It's been 45 minutes. I turned the fire off the stove. I actually lifted the rack. I always do that if I'm water bath canning on the stove. And what I do is I allow, you hear that pop? I allow those jars not to go completely out of hot water into very cool air. This allows them to get acquainted with one another, hot water and air, to make an even transition so I don't risk cracking a jar because that can happen. That was my five minute timer because I let mine sit like that for five minutes. So now it's all about removing the jars. You hear that pop? It's hopefully, gorgeous. Hopefully Mama doesn't burn her hand. Nope, hopefully Mama don't burn her hand, that's right. Some of you new canners that's joined since last year, I always cover my jars, and I do that just in case there's a failure. One happens to crack. Um, I mean, I've seen it happen. So I always cover my jars and I let them sit like this for 24 hours. So if I do have a crack or a spill, it's, these rags are gonna catch the glass, you know, to keep them from shattering everywhere. So this is just a little tip. When you pull your heart jars out, go ahead and cover them. And, oop, hear that pop? And you, you know, you can save yourself some major cleanup. And there you have Miss Lippy's Famous spaghetti sauce. <laughs> it ain't famous, is it? All right, tomorrow, I think tomorrow's salsa. Don't quote me on it, but I will see you back here in my kitchen tomorrow afternoon. So I hope you guys have a wonderful, blessed evening. And as always, stay safe, stay well, and God bless. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye, y'all. Make you some pasta sauce.